Okay, so we're back at it again. Uh, so in uh, the video that I put together on uh, multi-domain or piecewise functions, uh, I had a request uh, basically to, to look at a very specific function. And uh, I think the challenge in that particular function is that it needed to repeat itself uh, successively. And in this case, for three repetitions. So uh, this is the request I got and it defines the function over three different uh, sections. So from t, uh, from 0 to 0 0.1, it has one function increasing linearly as a function of time. Uh, and then uh, in the second uh, domain, 0 0.1 uh, to 0 0.2, it has a different function basically where it's decreasing linearly back to 0. And, and then finally in that last third of the repetition, uh, between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, uh, it's equal to zero. Uh, and so that piecewise function, it's no different than everything we did before. Uh, so I just went ahead and solved it, and it should look something like this. So again, I'm using the if and else if uh, statements going down here, the three different uh, domains, uh, and then the functions put in, assigning it to f, returning it, and we see it graphed out, and we get this sort of sawtooth pattern. And so that wasn't any different than before. So I didn't see any merit in uh, taking your time to do that. I will give you a link uh, to that uh, previous video uh, if this is where your challenge is. Uh, so you can do that. But where the interesting quirk in this one is, is it needs to repeat itself for three repetitions. And so that's what I'm going to work on today is I'm going to take this and make it repeat itself for three repetitions. So I'm just going to scroll down, have a look at uh, how we're going to solve this. So let's just do that. I've already set up a section where I'm going to do this calculation for the repeating function. So let me open that up here and uh, we'll see we've set ourselves up. So I've decided I'm going to use the for loop. The for loop is completely appropriate in this instance because it uses a known number of iterations uh, to walk through a series of calculations. And so I've set it up. I, I've uh, created a couple of variables already. The period we know is 0.3. Uh, the number of iterations we want is three, and I've set up a plot to plot it when we're done. So right now it's plotting the function from section one, but as we redefine f at t, it will plot the new f at t in this case. And so in the ideal sense, what we want to do is to get this to repeat itself uh, for the number of iterations that we've got. Um, so let's uh, set it up here. Uh, we need our f at t, and we'll define that and we're going to use the for loop so we need to set up our programming so go up to the math tab over to programming create a program and go right back in and we're going to use the for loop and you can see it there and remember you can always use the help if you're not sure about the syntax or what you're doing you can go back to the help and it will give you that so within the for loop we have a couple different parameters and the first thing we need to do is to give it a variable that is going to increment and then we have to give it the range over which it will increment. And in this case, we want to go from zero to uh, n minus one, right? Because zero would be the first increment, one would be the second repetition, and uh, two would be the third repetition, which is what we want, so n minus one. Now, we don't need it here because we're going up by uh, integer uh, increment of one by default, but we could put the increment there, and if we want it explicit, we'll do that. And so we have our for loop set up. Now, really what I want to do is to repeat that first period calculation, which I did before, but I'm going to have to modify it ever so slightly so that it doesn't get confused. And so it is so similar to what I did before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to copy my if block. And get all of that. Control C. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to paste it in. And now all I have to do is to do the modifications that I require to make this work. Now, the challenge in this one is that t is absolute. And so as t continues to increase past the first period, the calculation of t based on the formulas that we have is also going to keep getting larger and larger and larger. And so it's not going to repeat itself in this sort, sort of sawtooth pattern uh, that we're expecting. And so what I want to do is I'm going to have to adjust my value of t. And really what I want to do logically is to make it do the calculation as if it was in that first period, even though you're returning it for ever increasing values of t. 
And so the way I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put this in brackets here. Uh, so we have T and we're going to go minus the period times the iteration I that we're in. And so in the first instance, this is going to be equal to zero. And so it's just going to use time as it was in the first uh, instance. So that's great. And every successive time after that, it will subtract the additional time for subsequent uh, periods and uh, we'll be back as if we were in that first uh, instance. And so that looks like it's going to work. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Control C and wherever I have a T, I'm going to paste it in. And if I click outside of this, if I did it right, we're going to see our function show up as a sawtooth pattern for the three instances that uh, we were looking for. So this looks like it's working now. It still could be generalized a little bit better. I'm going from 0 to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. I could do those as functions of the period and I could make this more generic and more adaptable if I wanted to. But this seems to answer the question. So I think I'm going to leave it there. And uh, hopefully that was useful to you and it answers the question uh, that you were asking. Uh, if not, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can't adjust it. Okay, have a great day.